Well, we are finally getting some fall weather. All right, and since we can never just enjoy the season we're in, <laughs> many people are already wondering about our first snowfall and if it could coincide with this year's leaf peeping season. That's true. Meteorologist Audrey Puente joins us now with a closer look at what some people are calling snow leage that could be happening, Audrey. Yes, that's snow and foliage put together in just one lovely term here. Fall colors and the first snowflakes don't usually mix, but every once in a while, the two collide in a phenomenon called snow leage. This is when an early snowfall blankets the autumn leaves before they've had a chance to fall. You need two things to line up, peak or near peak color and an early shot of cold strong enough for snow air. In much of the North East and New England, measurable snow during peak or near peak foliage is rare, but not impossible. We have seen it here in the tri-state area. Peak color in New York City often hits in late October and early November, just as the atmosphere starts flirting with freezing temperatures. The 2011 Halloween Nor'easter, remember that one? That dumped heavy, wet October snow across Connecticut, parts of New Jersey and New York, while many trees still had leaves. A classic snow leage. Then in 2012, just days after Hurricane Sandy, another early November storm dropped nearly five inches of snow in Central Park. While it sounds beautiful, it can also be destructive as wet, heavy snow on leafy trees can snap branches and bring down power lines. Now, could this happen this year? The chances are very low here in the tri-state area as the fall foliage window is expected to lean a bit earlier this season, in part due to a lack of rain. We are eight inches below normal for the year. In addition, it was a warm September and early October October in Central Park. October snow events are rare with only three incidences of measurable snow on record. And here we have them on the graphic. That's the one from uh, near Halloween in 2011. I just spoke about where we had 2.9 inches in Central Park. That was actually the record for a snowfall of a uh, highest snowfall of any day in October in Central Park. We also broke records in uh, Hartford with 12 inches and Newark with five inches then. But you can see the only other two incidences are well under an inch, both in 1925 and 19. 52. So it's highly likely that we will not be seeing a snowy fall foliage seen anytime soon. But what we will be seeing is actually a nor'easter that will be heading in our direction. So I'm going to bring in Nick Gregory to actually discuss how that's going to yes. affect our weather pattern. Well, and think about it because the you know, nor'easter is going to bring potentially over 60 mile per hour wind gusts here Sunday into Monday. So right. the foliage could be a could be you know right, having an issue because with that. With the early season, yes. some of these leaves may actually be blown away before exactly. they even had a chance so to change color. Let's see how that happens. You sure. know, but again, the strongest wind is going to be along the coast, but we'll see how that goes mm -hmm. and we'll see if we can right, add to we'll this see. calendar here, yes. right? <laughs> all right, Audrey, thank you so much. And again, our headlines really are going to talk about that because we're, first of all, talking about a cold night ahead here, right? Fro you know, frost and freezing conditions, uh, particularly again, north and west of the city. That coastal storm threat is Sunday into Monday. It may linger into Tuesday, so we'll see how that plays out. And again, damaging wind gusts of over 60 miles per hour. This is a coastal uh, problem. Uh, again, all of our coastline, though, Connecticut, Long Island, down the Jersey Shore, so that could affect the leaves on the trees there. Inland areas, they'll still see some wind, but not at those speeds. Uh, and again, this is the other issue, moderate coastal flooding that could be happening as we get into our also a high tide cycle going on for uh, this year. All right, let's uh, go and see what we have as far as uh, our forecast here is concerned. Uh, we shouldn't be having this map. We should be having, I don't know why it's showing this. It shouldn't be showing that. All right. Uh, all right, just take a look at that map. I have to reset our graphic system. I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, again, we're talking about uh, a cold night ahead. We're talking temperatures that are going to be kind of stuck on into uh, the 30s in some of those uh, colder suburbs to the north and west. So that could be definitely be a problem. And uh, again, as we talk about the uh, temperatures that have been cool all through uh, uh, a good portion of the area on, uh, there we go, that map finally updated. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, 50s to about 60. All in the Northeast for high temperatures today. Now, yesterday in the middle part of the country, they were in the uh, 60s and 50s. Now they're back into the 70s and 80s. But that mild air is not coming directly back here. We're still dealing with the cool air from the north. 80s down to South Florida today, 82 in Denver, 60 Seattle and Portland, 72 as you got to Los Angeles. Now we'll look at the current temps here. Again, 52 Burlington, 51 Rochester, back to 60 in Pittsburgh, mid 60s, Washington, D.C., Southward. You had to go to Tennessee into the Carolinas to pick up 70s. And we're 57 in the park now. Same for Hartford. Mid upper 50s, Poughkeepsie to White Plains, 54 in the Hamptons, high 50s as you get towards Belmar with that north northeast wind at about 10 to 15 miles an hour, occasionally a little stronger than that. There's the freeze warning all across our northern suburbs into North Jersey. It's a frost advisory south of that, giving you an idea of where those temperatures are headed tonight. Sky is clear here, it's going to stay that way. 
as that high pressure kind of stays in control. And again, our uh, coastal storm is going to be sort of taking shape off the southeast coast of the United States. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our future cast here overnight as we get down to the upper 20s, low 30s north and west, about mid 40s in the city. And then tomorrow, again, we're only going to recover to the lower 60s, despite the fact that we have lots of sunshine. All right, let's look at one of our computer models here. This is going to show the storm coming up and kind of lingering around here Monday on into Tuesday. And now we're going to take a look at this next one. And that's going to show this is the European model showing almost the same deal again, producing potentially some pretty heavy rain. And we do have that high wind warning or watch, I should say, along the coast and the coastal flood watch also again along the coast. So we'll keep that in mind as well. All right, let's take a look at our uh, forecast here for tonight down to 46 in the city, upper 20s and 30s in the suburbs, 63 tomorrow, 68 Saturday as clouds return. Then it's a rainy, windy Sunday and Monday only in the lower 60s, still windy, maybe even a little bit of rain Tuesday morning, finally better Wednesday and Thursday. Steve and Natasha. All right, Nick, thanks so much.